The job started with a lot of walnut, followed by a lot of planing. Erica chipped in and planed up a lot of the shorter stuff. I decided to put in a double row of dominoes. Um, it was actually a decision that I came to regret and I'll explain that in another video. Whenever I can, I always use these sponge rollers to apply glue. I'm not a fan of loading the glue on so it all drips out over the bench and over the cramps. These little rollers, they actually put it on just at the right thickness. To get the correct table height, I needed each piece to, to finish at 60mm and I had planed these to 60mm. So cramping up I needed to keep them really flat and really straight. Bolting up was actually an incredibly laborious job. Um, I used some dowels for locating each at uh, each level or at each join and then a series of either through bolts or sometimes bolts into uh, threaded inserts. I think this was the first and last time I used a bradle to mark the hole centres. The positions of the holes weren't that important, uh, the depths were very important and quite critical. The inserts I used were made from carbon steel and not alloy. Uh, the alloy ones are just nowhere near, strong enough, not neither to put in or to hold. The ones I was using were M10 and I was drilling out a 13mm hole and they were a lovely fit into that. It was quite a frustrating job because I had to keep putting them on and then unbolting to add other bolts. Um, difficult to explain but you can probably see it was a case of on and off, on and off. Um, but we got there in the end. This little bundle of joy that I'm working on is actually the top part of the table. Um, the orientation of it sort of made it actually decided as to whether I could use a through bolt or a, a stopped bolt into an insert. Once I had the two top parts bolted up, I could then join them using the longer boards that created the, the bridge between the two parts. 
after adding a hundred ish bolts it was finally together I bought this shaper disc um, it's a very rough cut from Amazon for about I don't know 11 or 12 pounds I actually bought it way way before I took this job on I did also buy a cut saw uh, a finer grinding disc uh, but to be honest this one worked just as well um, and it lasted and it's still fine after this job although you can't see it I was wearing a full face mask which in my opinion is an essential piece of kit if you're ever going to do this sort of work uh, the dust does fly it literally everywhere and there's a lot of it I followed up the grind with these uh, sanding discs again they were really good reasonably priced from Amazon um, and they were really good I only used about two or three discs for the whole job The discs uh, were really good, but it still needed a final sand with uh, my orbital sander. One of the problems with YouTube is it's going to look like I made this table in, in an afternoon, but trust me, it was several weeks of solid work. I'm using a Morel's PU lacquer, mixed two parts of lacquer to one part catalyst. You should only thin to a maximum of 10%. If you thin it any more, then you actually compromise the durability of the lacquer. Spraying is really quick. The preparation before and during isn't. And this is when the fun really starts. There's a lot of chalk in the base coat or sealer coat and that is the white that you can see. It adds body to the lacquer. Our clients are keen art collectors and they ask for a statement piece, something original, something sculptural and I hope we delivered. The job also included two large mirrors and a sideboard. The glass size is 2400 by 1000 the thickness is 19mm, it's toughened low iron glass and it will comfortably seat 8 to 10 people. Thanks for watching.